friends, welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Maureen and today we are talking about apples. But first, let's sing our hello song. When we sing hello, let's make a salute. And when we sing friends, let's take our first two fingers and have them give each other a little hug. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good job guys. Apples and apple picking are such a big part of fall. Have you been apple picking this year? Apples can be so many different colors. What colors can apples be? Hmm. They can be red and green and yellow. And there are so many different types of apples and each different type of apple tastes a little different. Do you like sweet, juicy apples? Or do you prefer sour tasting apples? I like the sour ones a little bit more than the sweet ones. What are some things you can make with apples? You could make an apple pie or apple tarts. You could make applesauce. Maybe you press apple cider at your house. What's your favorite apple treat? Let's talk about the word apple. What letter does apple start with? Ah, ah, apple. Yeah, apple starts with the letter A. A is for apple. Can you help me spell the word apple? A P P L E Apple Apple Good job. Let's learn a couple words in American Sign Language to talk about apples. First, let's learn the word apple. We've learned this one already, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again. So, do you remember what letter apple starts with? A apple. Right, A. A is for apple. To sign the word apple, you'll take the knuckle of your first finger and just twist it on your cheek. Apple, apple, good job. Why don't we learn how to sign pie? Because apple pies are so delicious. What letter does pie start with? It makes a p, p sound, pie. Yeah, pi starts as a letter P. P is for pi. P. To sign the word pi, take your non-dominant hand, the one we don't use for eating or for writing, and hold it flat in front of you. And pretend that your dominant hand is a knife cutting a slice of pie. So, ch -ch -ch pie. Pie. You can say apple pie. Mmm. Let's learn one more word. Let's learn orchard. An orchard is a place where a lot of fruit trees or nut trees or maple trees are growing. So a lot of apples come from an apple orchard. So what letter does orchard start with? Uh, uh. Orchard. Orchard. Yeah, orchard starts with the letter O. O is for orchard. O for orchard. To sign the word orchard, 
We'll start by making our sign for tree. Do you remember that sign? Tree. But instead of just once, we'll do it a couple times as we go across our body. Orchard. Like there's a lot of trees. Orchard. Good job. So now, if you go apple picking, you can talk about how you are going to visit the orchard. So you can pick apples and then make apple pie. Mm. Before we go into the first book, why don't we sing the alphabet together? You can pat along at home. You can sing along with me. You can just listen. Or you can try signing with me if you like. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Good job, friends. Our first book today is called Apples Here, and it is written and illustrated by Will Hubble. This book follows the growth and harvest of an apple tree for an entire year. Apples here. Apples here. There are many apples here. Hidden in the buds and waiting for spring. There are apples here. Scenting the air and waiting for bees. There are apples here. Waiting for the sun and rain to help them grow. There are apples here. Waiting to be picked. Apples here, calls the farmer. Macintosh, Gala, Golden Delicious, all kinds of apples. Apples for cider. Apples for pies. Apples for applesauce on Hanukkah latkes. Apples to find in Christmas stockings. Apples to eat and apples to share. There are apples here. The end. So I have an apple tree here on the board, but our apple tree hasn't started growing apples yet. But I think that it's ready. The apples that are growing on this tree all have a number on them. And I wonder if you guys can help me figure out what number is on the tree. These numbers will not be in order, so we won't be counting them. See if you can just recognize the number on each apple. All right, what's the first number on our first apple to grow in the tree? Do you know that number? Hmm, that's the number seven. Hmm. What 
is this number? There are two numbers there, a one and a zero. And when they're next to each other, they make the number 10. One zero means 10. 10. Oh, do you know this number? Hmm. It's the number four. Four. Oh. Hmm. Do you know what number it is? It's the number six. Six. Think the numbers are being put on the tree in a special order? Hmm. I guess we'll see. Maybe they'll line up. Oh. What number is this? Hmm. It's the number three. Three. Our tree is really filling out. I think it's gonna be full soon. Oh. What about this one? It looks a little bit like a snowman. Hmm. What number is this? Oh, it's the number eight. Let's see. I think we're missing a couple numbers. Certainly have some room for more apples to grow. Hmm. Oh. What number is this? Number one. One. Ooh, I have some more. Wow, what number is this? This is a very special number, the number five. We'll put five right there between four and six. We almost have our tree all the way full. We're just missing a couple numbers. Wow, what is this number? Hmm. It's the number nine. Yeah. So nine goes right here between eight and ten. Eight, nine, ten. What number are we missing? Let's see if we can figure it out. We have one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. What number comes after one and before three? The number two. There we go. Now we have a full tree. How many apples do we have on the tree? Hmm. Let's count them. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten apples. Yum. Our next book is called A New House for Mouse by Peter Horacek. And this book is about a mouse that finds a really juicy, delicious apple. And he really, really, really wants to eat it, but his house is too small to fit it in. So he goes looking for a new house. A New House for Mouse. A New House for Mouse. One day, 
A little mouse looked out of the tiny hole where she lived and saw a big apple. I would like that apple to eat, said little mouse. I must bring it inside. She tried and tried, but she couldn't pull the apple through the tiny hole. My little house is too small, said little mouse. I'll look for a bigger one. So off she set. Looking for a new house makes you hungry, said little mouse, as she took a few bites of the juicy apple. Then she spotted a hole that was just a little bigger than hers. This looks just right, she said as she looked inside. bigger house for my apple and me. May I live here with you? I'm sorry, mumbled Mole, but my home is too full of books. I don't think there is room for both of us. I'll keep looking, said Little Mouse. Soon, Little Mouse felt hungry again. I'll just have a nibble, she said to herself. Then she spotted a hole that was just a little bigger than Mole's. That will be perfect, she said. She looked inside. Hello, Rabbit, she said. I'm looking for a bigger house for my apple and me. May I live here with you? I'm sorry, twittered Rabbit, but my home is too full of cabbage. I don't think there is room for both of us. Perhaps not, said Little Mouse. Little Mouse set off again, but she was still hungry, so she nibbled on the apple as she went. Then she spotted another hole that was just a little bigger than Rabbit's. That will be just right, she said. She looked inside. Hello, Badger, she said. I am looking for a new home for my apple and me. May we come and live with you? I'm sorry, barked Badger but I stretch out on my cushions all day sleeping. I don't think there's room for both of us. Perhaps not, said Little Mouse, feeling rather tired and still hungry. She nibbled on the apple once again. That evening, she came across an enormous hole. This must be big enough for my apple and me, she thought. Hello, is anybody there? She shouted. <sighs> Hello, little mouse, growled Bear. Why don't you come and live here with me? No, thank you, squeaked little mouse. I think the cave is too small for you and me and my apple. And off she ran. Little Mouse was very tired now, but pulling the apple seemed easier. Suddenly, she saw a tiny hole. That looks perfect, she squeaked. She looked inside. There was no one at home. Little Mouse went right in and pulled her apple behind her. It fit perfectly. I knew I would find somewhere just right for both me and my apple, she said and she climbed into her own bed and fell fast asleep. The End I want to have only five apples on my tree. Can you help me take away apples until we only have five left? Let's try. So we have 10 nine, eight, seven, six. The next one is five, so we wanna leave that there. Let's count to make sure we have five apples. One, two, three, four, 
Perfect. Good job, guys. I'm going to spread these out a little bit. Lots of animals like to eat apples. Not just humans. Hmm. Can you think of some animals that might like to eat apples? Maybe a mouse. Maybe birds. Probably chickens, right? I think some fallen apples on farms. Probably a nice little sweet treat for them. Hmm. What else? Maybe a squirrel? Yeah. Or what about something wiggly? Sometimes, if given the chance, they'll burrow into a little apple. Worms. I have a song about a very little hungry worm who wants to eat all the apples out of the tree. So we have five apples in the tree. Five little apples hanging in the tree, teasing Mr. Wiggly Worm. You can't catch me, you can't catch me. But along comes Mr. Wiggly Worm, quiet as can be. And crunch, 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 crunch that apple right out of the tree. How many apples do we have left? We had five, one got crunched up. Now we have one, two, three, four. Four little apples hanging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Wiggly Worm, you can't catch me, you can't catch me. But along comes Mr. Wiggly Worm, quiet as can be. And crunch, 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 crunch that apple right out of the tree. Oh, we had four apples and one got crunched up by Mr. Wiggly Worm. So we have how many left? Hmm. One, two, three. Three little apples hanging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Wiggly Worm, you can't catch me, you can't catch me. Well, along comes Mr. Wiggly Worm, quiet as can be. And crunch, 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 crunch that apple right out of that tree. <gasps> huh. We had three apples in the tree, but one more was eaten by Mr. Wiggly Worm. How many apples do we have left? One, two, two little apples hanging in the tree, teasing Mr. Wiggly Worm, you can't catch me, you can't catch me. Well, along comes Mr. Wiggly Worm, quiet as can be, and crunch, 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 crunch that apple right out of the tree. We had two apples left. And then Mr. Wiggly Worm came along and ate one more. And now we have one, just one apple. One little apple hanging in the tree, teasing Mr. Wiggly Worm. You can't catch me. You can't catch me. Wow. Along comes Mr. Wiggly Worm. And crunch, 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 crunch. Crunch that apple right out of the tree. We had one apple left, but Mr. Wiggly Worm crunched it away. And now we have zero, none, no more apples. Oh man. Our next book is called Up, Up, Up. It's apple picking time by Jody Fix Shapiro. And this book tells the story of a brother and a sister who spend the weekend at their grandparents' orchard picking and baking and eating and selling apples. Up, 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 it's apple picking time. Ooh, 
lots of different apples. Up, up, up. It's apple picking time. Up, up, up. It's apple picking time. Mama's voice tickles my ear, whispers me awake. On with my shirt, sweater, pants, warm socks, and shoes, not tied. Outside, it feels as if we're the only ones awake in the whole world. Dad says, it's a long drive ahead. Amber uses my shoulder for her pillow, but I don't mind. She's keeping me warm while we're driving, driving, driving to the Apple Ranch. Two picnics later, one for breakfast, one for lunch, we're finally off the highway and onto the twisting, bumpy, narrow bridge. One car only, apple tree lined road. There they are, Granny and Grandpa, standing at the gate, calling, Hooray, we're so glad you're finally here. We could hardly wait. Neither could we, we say. Then everyone is off to the orchard. It's apple picking time. Apple smell is in the air. Apple perfume everywhere. There are so many trees and it looks like a million apples. Red, green, yellow, and pink. I don't know where to start, I tell Grandpa. He pulls a yellow apple off a tree, puts it up to his nose, and breathes in like Mama does with a flower. Ah, oh, it's the perfect apple aroma, says Grandpa, and we lean in close and smell it too. From his pocket, he takes out his red-handled knife and cuts a slice out of the apple. Have a taste, he says. The apple is cool and crunchy and sweet. Everyone has a slice and we all stand together in the afternoon sunshine, wishing we could have more. But it's apple picking time. Begin with this golden delicious, Miles, Grandpa tells me. He points to the tree where we're standing and hands me a small sack made from cloth. I give the littlest tug and the yellow fruit almost falls into my hand. It's as big as my softball. The sack gets heavy fast. Every time it's full, I empty it into a wooden field box. We climb up ladders and disappear into trees. I can see Dad's legs. His voice is coming from the middle of a tree filled with red apples. He's singing a made-up song about loving apple dumplings and eating apple pie. The tree next to him has Mama's laugh. That's the only way I can tell she's in it. Amber and Granny are picking up fruit from the ground. Granny says these apples will make the best cider. The mention of cider makes me want some. It's warm work picking apples. I say that it already smells as if cider is hiding somewhere in the orchard. That's apple orchard perfume you're smelling, Miles, says Granny. Then she surprises us with cups of cool apple juice. All afternoon, we fill those apple sacks with delicious, both red and golden, Macintosh, Pippin, Winter Banana, a funny name for an apple if you ask me, and the last few stray Gravensteins. The wagon cart is loaded with boxes filled to the brim. Daylight runs out fast in that canyon, even in summer. Granny's pippin pie makes a fine end to an apple picking day. Early to bed, have to be well rested for an apple selling day. Up, 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 it's apple selling time. Grandpa's whiskers scratch my cheek and the smell of breakfast cooking pulls me out of bed. It's Grandpa's morning oatmeal with sweet applesauce. Then we're out to the fruit stand through the dew wet grass. Grandpa turns over the carved wooden sign, 
cars pull in. Granny, wearing a big straw hat trimmed all around with shiny apples, greets old friends. These are the grandkids come to help. She almost sings the words. Apples are tasted, admired, and bought. We carry bags and boxes of apples to cars for the people who come and go all morning. Lunch is a picnic in the sunshine, but we can hardly sit still enough to eat. It's apple selling time. And then, before you can say Macintosh, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious Pip and Pie, the sun has flown away, taking the warmth with it. The sign is turned to closed. It's time to call it a day. Supper is fresh baked apple dumplings, floating like islands in a sea of milk. Then there's talking about that apple selling day. Grandpa puts on old jazz records on his phonograph and dances with, around with Amber. Even Mama and Dad dance. But I like lying on the rug in front of the fireplace, just watching everyone being happy, wishing we didn't have to go home tomorrow. It's hard to say goodbye. Hello hugs are much nicer. Sackfuls of apples surround Amber and me. We're driving, driving home. Their cidery smell helps me remember the happy days of apple picking, apple selling time. The end. So I have a song for us to sing that is about apple picking. And we have a couple movements that you can do with it if you would like to. So if you'd like to do the movements, we're going to start off by driving. We are hurry hurrying to the farm. Hurry hurry to the farm, hurry hurry to the farm, hurry hurry to the farm, let's all pick some apples. Now, we're gonna go on a hayride. Can you bumpity bump in your seat? You can bump your shoulders too if you want, that's easier. Bumpity bump on the hayride, bumpity bump on the hayride, bumpity bump on the hayride, let's all pick some apples. Now let's look, look, and find a tree. Look now, look now, find a tree. Look now, look now, find a tree. Look now, look now, find a tree. Look, now, look, now, find a tree. Let's all pick some apples. Oh, we found some. Can we climb up high to reach them? Climb up, climb up, reach up high. Climb up, climb up, reach up high. Climb up, climb up, reach up high. Let's all pick some apples. Now we have to plop them, plop them in our bag. Ready? Plop them, plop them in our bag. Plop them, plop them in our bag. Plop them, plop them in our bag. Let's all pick some apples. Now that we have a bag full of apples, I don't know about you, but I want to take a bite. Crunch them, crunch them, take a bite. Crunch them, crunch them, take a bite. Crunch them, crunch them, take a bite. Hooray for the apple farm. Good job, guys. Before we go on to our last book, let's sing our The Farmer Plants the Seed song. So if you'd like to act out the movements with me, why don't you join me in standing up? Let's start by planting our seeds. The farmer plants the seeds, the farmer plants the seeds. Hi-ho the dairy -oh, the farmer plants the seeds. The sun begins to shine, the sun begins to shine. Hi-ho, the dairy -o, the sun begins to shine. Can we have the rain fall? The rain begins to fall, the rain begins to fall. Hi-ho, the dairy -o, the rain begins to fall. Will you grow with me? Let's grow. 
plants begin to grow, the plants begin to grow. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the plants begin to grow. The vegetables are here, the vegetables are here. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the vegetables are here. The farmer digs them up, the farmer digs them up. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the farmer digs them up. Ooh, let's eat them. Now it's time to eat. Now it's time to eat. Hi ho the dairy o oh, now it's time to eat. Mmm. Good job, friends. Our last book is called Little Apple Goat. It's by Caroline Jane Church. And this is a story about a very special goat who lives on a farm with a beautiful orchard. And this goat just loves eating fruit from the trees in the orchard. But one day a storm blows over the whole orchard and all the animals think that they lost it forever. But there's a surprise waiting for them. Little Apple Goat. Little apple goat. Down on the farm, there lived a little goat. She was quite an ordinary goat, ordinary in every way, in every way that is, except one. She had quite unusual eating habits. While most goats were happy to chew on last week's leftovers, or Wednesday's washing, little apple goat preferred apples and pears and cherries. Every autumn, little apple goat spent happy days in the orchard waiting for a crunchy apple, a rosy pear, or a juicy cherry to fall. Plop! When evening came, little apple goat would trot home to her meadow, and on the way she would send a shower of pits and seeds over the hedge. Plippity plip. Day after day, year after year, little apple goat's pits and seeds flew over the hedge. One particular autumn day, a breeze began to blow. The breezy afternoon became a blustery evening and the blustery evening blew into a stormy night. The animals were very scared indeed. They huddled close together inside the barn while the wind howled all night long. In the morning, little apple goat rushed straight to the orchard. The storm had toppled every single tree. The orchard that little apple goat loved so much was gone. All the animals were very sad when the farmer came to take the logs away. The farm just won't be the same without the orchard, they said. As autumn turned to winter, Little Apple Goat watched smoke curl from the farmhouse chimney. At least the logs will keep the farmer warm, she thought. At last, spring came. One day, Little Apple Goat noticed something bright and flowery peeking over the top of the hedge. Blossoms. Hmm, she thought as she continued on her way. And then one autumn, the blossoms were gone. Now fruit hung from the branches. Little apple goat could hardly believe it. The animals were so happy to have a new orchard. How did this happen? Who could have planted it, they wondered. But you know who, don't you? Plippity plip, plop. The end. Let's do a little rhyme together. 
This one is called Way Up High in the Apple Tree. So can you stretch your arms up way up high for this first part? Way up high in the apple tree. Two little apples were smiling at me. So I shook that tree as hard as I could and down fell the apples. Mmm, were they good. Good job, guys. Let's do that rhyme one more time. Way up high in the apple tree, two little apples were smiling at me. So I shook that tree as hard as I could and down fell the apples. Mmm, were they good. Good job, friends. Before we say goodbye and go on to our at-home activity, let's sing our Autumn Leaves song. So if you'd like to act out the movements with me, please join me in standing up. Let's start off by putting our arms up and having our hands be the autumn leaves. Autumn leaves are in the trees, in the trees, in the trees. Autumn leaves are in the trees all over town. Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down, falling down. Autumn leaves are falling down all over town. Can we swirl around? Autumn leaves are swirling around, swirling around, swirling around. Autumn leaves are swirling around all over over town. Let's rake them up. Everybody rake them up, rake them up, rake them up. Everybody rake them up all over town. Are you ready to jump into the piles we made? Jump into the piles we made, piles we made, piles we made. Jump into the piles we made all over town. Good job, friends. Well, that's it for story time today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a great time. I hope that you did too. I will be back next week with another pre-recorded story time. If you live in the area, we are going to be starting to host two outdoor story times on the lawn every week. So if you're interested in that, please visit our website, visit us on Facebook, or email me at the email listed below, and we will give you the details on that. Otherwise, you can find us on Facebook Live on Tuesdays at 1.30, or here on YouTube on Thursdays. Let's sing our goodbye song, and then I have an at-home activity for you. When we sing goodbye, we are going to wave, and we are going to clap. We wave goodbye like this, we wave goodbye like this, we clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Goodbye, friends. Today we are going to use an apple as a stamp to make an apple pie craft. So for this craft, you will need a paper plate or just a circle cut out of a piece of white paper. You'll need some light brown paper, scrap paper if you have it, and scissors and glue, and red, green, and or yellow paint, as well as something to put it on. And of course, an apple. I got this one off the ground near the crab apple trees that we have outside the library. If you have access to a tree like that, that could be a great use for those apples since you probably won't eat them. But you can just use an apple from the grocery store as well. If you do that, I recommend that you cut it in half and use one half for the craft and the other half as a snack. So first thing, you'll want to ask an adult to cut your apple in half, right down the middle. Like that. And dry out each side 
on a paper towel. So now I'm gonna get my paint ready. You can dip your apple into the paint or you can use a paintbrush to paint the paint onto the apple. So I'm going to use the red for dipping and I will paint the green and yellow onto the other side of my apple. I'll get a good amount of red there. Some green. And some yellow. My apples are still a little wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If you have the time, I would suggest letting them dry out as much as possible so that they're not damp on the inside. All right, so I'm gonna use this one um, to stamp into the red. Okay, and then we're just gonna stamp onto our paper plate or our circle piece of paper. That one came out a little weird, but you get the idea. I'm going to use my paintbrush for yellow and green. I'm going to use this one for green too, so I just rubbed, stamped out some of the yellow on the paper towel. I'm going to clean off my brush. And go for green. Okay, so while I wait for my paint to dry, I am going to cut strips of brown paper, and that's gonna be the pie crust. You'll want your strips to be about as long as the diameter of your circle from one side to the other. And you'll probably want about eight. Okay, so now that my paint is dry, I am going to glue my brown pieces of paper in a lattice or like a grid over my pie. And I think I'm only actually gonna use six pieces, but that part's up to you, whatever you think looks good. So we'll glue it so it kind of looks like that. And then you can also trim the extra paper if you want to. I'm also going to draw a little bit around the edges of the pie with a brown marker 
just to make an extra little crust. All right, there we go. There is my apple pie. Thanks guys, have fun.